Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, my name is Hina Shokar and I am your class 9th chemistry teacher. Our topic that we are going to is elements from the topic basic definitions from chapter number 1, fundamentals of chemistry. So students, let's have a quick recap of our previous lesson. We have started our topic 1.2 basic definitions and in basic definitions we have discussed so far definition of matter physical states of matter what are physical properties what are chemical properties what is physical change what is chemical change and then we started classifying matter agar hum matter ko classify kare to humne dekha ki hum usko classify kar sakte hain two major groups mein substances or mixtures and if we look into substance so substance could be of two types, element or compound. In this lesson, we are going to discuss in detail element. So let's start. If we talk about brief history of elements, so in early ages, there were only nine elements that were known. Carbon, gold, silver, tin, mercury, lead, copper, iron, and sulfur. At that time, Substances cannot be broken down by chemical processes. Means people of that time were ye sochte the ki substances ko hum chemical ways se bhi mazid simple substances mein break down nahi kar sakte. Means unka ye manna tha ki substances ya phir pure cheezein kabhi bhi apne components mein divide nahi hoti. Aage ja ke hum dekhenge ki kya unka manna thik tha. Until the end of 19th century, only 63 elements had been discovered. And now we have 118 elements that have been discovered so far. And out of those 118 elements, there are 92 naturally occurring elements. You have to memorize this number, 92 naturally occurring elements. This is very important. Now, as we know, what is the brief history of elements and how many elements we have around us? Let's have a look. What is actually an element? And to understand it in a better way, let's go to visual room. So students, to understand what is an element, let's discuss one example. Have you ever tried making sugar into caramel? I hope all of you know what sugar is. Let me tell you the chemical formula for sugar. It's C12H22O11. This is the chemical formula of sugar and the chemical name is sucrose. So my question was, have you ever tried making sugar into caramel? Uske liye aapko karna kya hota hai? You will take sugar and you will pour your sugar into a pot and then you're going to place that pot over heat. To jab hum sugar ko heat karte hain kaafi deir ke liye, so what happens that sugar turns into black and bitter mass. Yes, black and bitter. Bitter matlab thoda kadwa hota hai taste mein. So what actually happened to our sugar? Our sugar was crystalline, white colored substance. But upon heating, what happened? You will get black colored carbon. So this is because sugar has broken down into carbon and water vapors. The carbon is the black solid that you will get upon heating. You know that heating can cause a chemical change in the sugar. And upon that chemical change, you will get new substances. So you will say that, okay, we have seen carbon, the black mass in our pot, but where is the water vapor? So water vapors, basically, they will evaporate and they will go into the air. So if sugar can be broken down into carbon and water vapors, so we will say that sugar is not an element. So we can say that elements cannot be broken down into simpler substances by chemical processes. Since sugar can be broken down, so it means that it is not an element. So what about water vapor? Water vapor is not an element either. Water vapor can be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. As you all know that water is made up of two particles of hydrogen and one particle of oxygen. When two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen they chemically combine together you will get water so when water is decomposed means it will turn into its components so you will get hydrogen and oxygen separated so do you think water is an element no because elements cannot be broken down into simpler substances so let's have a look to this flow chart sugar 
sugar can be broken down so sugar is not an element right but upon this breakdown you will get carbon and water vapors carbon cannot be broken down into simpler substances so carbon would be an element and water vapor it is not an element either but we can break down water vapors into hydrogen and oxygen can you break down hydrogen no hydrogen is so small you cannot break down so hydrogen would be an element and same oxygen would be an element so you can say elements consist of same kind of atoms if i'll say that i have hydrogen gas in this jar so it means it would be having all the atoms of hydrogen which are of the same composition let's have a look at the modern definition of elements so modern definition of element is that it is a substance made up of same type of atoms having same atomic number and cannot be decomposed into simple substances by ordinary chemical means so this definition is having three parts one is in an element same type of atoms are present means all the atoms they should be same same means same in size and all their properties should be same same atomic number atomic number is a property of atoms and for different atoms atomic number is different atomic number is a unique number which is given to the atoms so same atomic number is the confirmation that all the atoms of that substance are same cannot be decomposed decomposed means breaking down into simpler substances for example decomposition of water is going to give you hydrogen and oxygen so what is an element made up of same type of atom same atomic number cannot be decomposed into simple substances by chemical reactions so unique type of atoms and of course if one thing is having unique type of atom it would be having some specific properties which would be different from the other atoms now if we talk about the existence of elements ke elements kin kin halaton mein paaye jate hain so elements can occur in free state or combined state har cheez akele stable nahi hoti to sometimes elements ko stability attain karne ke liye unke atoms ko stable hone ke liye dusri cheezon ke sath combine hona padta hai usko hum kehte hain combined state for example agar hum baat kare carbon ki to carbon akela bhi maujood hai aur कार्बन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड में भी मौजूद है सो इन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इट इज प्रेजेंट इन कंबाइंड फॉर्म सिंस वी नो दैट देयर आर 92 नेचुरली अकरिंग एलिमेंट्स 92 नेचुरली अकरिंग एलिमेंट्स व्हिच इज अ बिग नंबर एंड वी से दैट नेचुरली अकरिंग मींस दे आर प्रेजेंट इन आवर नेचर नेचर मींस इट इट शुड बी प्रेजेंट इन आवर एनवायरमेंट एज़ वेल सो आवर एनवायरमेंट इज हैविंग थ्री मेजर सिस्टम्स अर्थ क्रस्ट ओशंस एंड atmosphere and these 92 naturally occurring elements they are present somewhere in these three systems we don't have any other system so let's have a look into the natural occurrence by weight percent of some major elements all of these elements they are not present in the same amount they are not present in equal amount weight percent means if you say that the weight of earth's crust suppose suppose it is 100 gram suppose i know it's very small but just suppose it if it is 100 gram so i say oxygen is 47% it means that out of those 100 grams we have oxygen 47 grams this is weight percent so in earth's crust most amount of element is oxygen which is 47% if we talk about oceans so the major element of ocean is oxygen which is 86% but if we talk about atmosphere you know that atmosphere means which is the gases and everything and it is made up of mostly gases so nitrogen is present 78% yes it is not oxygen maybe you were thinking of oxygen but no in atmosphere it is nitrogen which is 78% other major elements in earth's crust are silicon 28% and aluminum 7.8% and in oceans a part of oxygen we have hydrogen which is 11% and chlorine which is 1.8% in atmosphere 
after the nitrogen we have oxygen 21 percent and argon 0 0.9 percent let's share one interesting information with you if i said that natural occurrence of element is in our atmosphere is in our earth's crust is in our oceans means these are the system of our environment so what about us we are also the part of nature so these elements should be present in us as well right so yes in our living body the major part is water which is 65 to 80 percent by mass but remember water is not an element because water can be broken down into simple substances but a part of this water we have some elements in our body as well but out of 92 naturally occurring elements we have six elements six major elements which constitute about 99 percent of the mass remaining mass so these six elements are oxygen which is 65 percent carbon which is 18 percent hydrogen 10 percent nitrogen 3 percent calcium 1.5 percent phosphorus 1.5 percent now these are the six major things which are contributing six major elements which are contributing 99 percent of the rest of the body mass but there are other elements as well which are present in very 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 minute amount for example potassium sulfur magnesium and sodium constitute 0.8 percent of our body mass and copper zinc fluorine chlorine iron cobalt manganese they constitute only 0.2 percent of our body mass but they are present in our body so since now we know the occurrence of elements ke hume kaun kaun se elements kahan kahan milte hain aur sabse zyada kaun sa element hamare atmosphere mein paya jata hai sabse zyada kaun sa element ocean mein aur earth crust mein paya jata hai aur sabse zyada kaun sa element hamari body mein paya jata hai let's move on to the classification of elements of course 118 elements and 92 naturally occurring elements ko ikatthe padhna is little bit difficult and to learn their properties individually it's a huge task so what scientists have done they have categorized them into different classes so they have classified the elements we have classified elements in several ways previously they were classified according to the states of matter states of matter means the physical state of matter remember we have discussed physical state of matter so the matter can exist in three physical states solid liquid and gas but when we say the physical state of matter so we mean the physical state at room temperature remember the term physical change matter can change from one state to another state matter can change from solid to liquid at different temperatures so when we will be discussing the physical state of matter it means at room temperature so majority of the elements they are present in solid state for example sodium copper iron zinc silver gold aluminium magnesium all of these elements they are present in solid state but there are some elements which are present in liquid state for example mercury and bromine you know what is the property of liquid state that liquids can flow liquids can flow so mercury is a liquid element you have seen mercury in thermometers yes thermometers you can see that silvery silvery liquid which will move up and down that is basically mercury so mercury is an example of liquid state of an element and the third state of matter is gas state as the name indicates all of the elements that are present in gas form they would be classified under this heading oxygen hydrogen nitrogen neon helium chlorine these are some common gases now these were the classification of elements on the basis of their physical states of matter but since elements can change their physical state at different temperatures and we have different temperatures on the different parts of the earth so scientists have classified elements on the basis of their properties as well these classes are metals non-metals and metalloids in tino mein difference kya hai aur in tino ki examples kya hai ye hum discuss karne wale hain apne agle lecture mein detail ke saath so students aaj ke lecture mein humne start kiya apna topic elements aur usme humne dekha 
ब्रीफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ एलिमेंट मॉडर्न डेफिनेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स और हमने ट्राई किया उसके सारे कॉम्पोनेंट्स को डिटेल में समझने की देन अक्रेंस ऑफ एन एलिमेंट इन आर एनवायरमेंट एंड फाइनली द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एन एलिमेंट वी आर डन विद क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट अकॉर्डिंग टू द फिजिकल स्टेट्स ऑफ मैटर एंड वी हैव जस्ट नेम द क्लासिफिकेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर प्रॉपर्टीज we are going to discuss metals non metals and metalloids their properties and their examples in detail in our next lecture tab tak ke liye allah hafiz